Hello and welcome to wrap up of day three at ISE 2020. It's in Amsterdam, definitely not in Barcelona. It's definitely in Amsterdam. Um, so today, what did we see? Um, I had a really nice chat with John Sidwick from Maverick um, about interoperability. It's, it's a kind of key issue because, you know, the launch of Barco Clickshare Conference and stuff, it's BYOD is, sounds like an old fashioned term now, I guess, but it's still a big issue. And it's great to hear, you know, a distributor like that really pushing forward that message that they want an open platform. We all want that. It's just getting there has been slow and tricky. <laughs> yeah, and on my end, I'm seeing something tangential, which is we've got all these systems that are going to work together, maybe will work together, but we're going to have to make sure that we have the management and the remote operability to keep an eye on them, make sure nothing's messing up, make sure integrators can speed up how quickly they respond to any issues that crop up. Um, dropped by quite a number of boots. Uh, QSC Reflect has been announced, which is a similar kind of thing. Nothing moving on the part of getting it all into one window pane, but everyone's trying to make that one window pane, which I think is a good start. Sure. I mean, another another issue I was made aware of today, which is kind of a side effect of the coronavirus stuff, is uh, production issues that will maybe affect the industry come the summer. You know, a lot of these factories in China have been shut. Uh, Foxconn has only reopened today, I believe, with only 10% of staff capacity to normal. So this is really going to, not going to affect us now, I think, the industry, but I think come maybe May, June, July, there's going to be some serious shortages out there, I think. Yeah, I've had similar conversations with a number of people, a lot of them Chinese manufacturers, and those who had global expansion plans from before. Uh, people who are already implementing strategies such as getting some of their manufacturing out into the other regions, into EMEA, into the Americas, to speed up fulfillment on those ends. They're saying that it is going to be, have an impact, but it's not going to be as detrimental to their businesses. Sure. And finally, just a tiny bit of a rant to end. Just something that's been annoying me. There's a, there's a, there's a booth, I shall not name them, uh, that features a robotic exotic dancer i just think it's just kind of disappointed me really at a time when we're talking about bringing more women into the av industry i don't know what what message does that send out to me it's a really retrograde kind of 1970s step i really don't know what the thinking was behind that i guess we're gonna go and ask them <laughs> right. but in all honesty jokes aside uh, the industry does need to move forward. We've got to diversify. We've got to make sure that everyone feels welcome. I had a panel today where the panelists were talking about the fact that we need an influx of new skills, new talent, not the same people that we see at every trade show. And things like this is what the new generations are looking at. They, they want to come and work someplace that's open, that's hospitable, that's going to be welcoming. And it's this going to is, put people off, isn't it? I mean, it's not the face that we want to put forward to not. people who want, might not be from the industry but might be thinking of joining. 100%. Uh, many thanks for joining us for the wrap up video day three. Join us tomorrow for the wrap up and the farewell to Amsterdam. Goodbye, Amsterdam. <laughs>